Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at timers in Swing and we're going to add a timer to our reaction time program so that it actually has some kind of useful functionality. Before I do that, I've got these panels here and I just want to adjust these colors a bit. So this panel where it keeps you waiting, uh, so it's going to change eventually and you've got to click on it as quickly as possible. And the panel that you see while you're waiting I'm going to change that to maybe have a red background and the panel where you've got to click as quickly as possible. Let's give that a green background and the result panel here. Let's maybe give that actually it's probably OK as it is. I think, yeah, it'll probably do. Let's just run this and remind ourselves what it looks like at the moment. So at the moment it looks like this. So those are the different um, screens we get. This is actually really hard to see. So I think instead of just green, let's make it darker than just plain light green because that's not easy to see at all. So I think now it should look pretty good. Okay, yeah, I can see all those, all the text is clear. I probably would like a different color or a different look for that last panel there. I might just make the text black and make the background white here. Well, anyway, this, this is unimportant. You can play around with it as you like, but we've got these four screens now. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a timer in here and some logic. We'll go to our controller.java here. So suppose the state is greet and someone clicks it, then we do want to go to this wait state. So that's fine. But what we also want to do then is start a timer running. So firstly, I need to calculate some kind of time that we're going to rate, wait, and that should be random so that people can't predict it in advance. Let's give the controller a field, which will be private, random, random, and set that equal to a new random. This will enable us to generate random numbers. So I'm just gonna add the import for that. And then, so here, when we go into the wait state, let's first calculate some random number of milliseconds to wait. So I'll say int wait time equals and let's say random dot next int and pass that maybe 2000. So that's going to return a number which is going to go from zero up to 1999. So it includes the includes zero potentially, but it's not going to include 2000. And then I can just add to that maybe another two or 3000 milliseconds because we don't want it to immediately change. That would be a bit sort of unfair. We want to give the user some breathing space, I think. Maybe 2000 is enough. We'll see how that looks shortly in any case. Now we'll create a timer. So I'm going to say var timer equals new timer. And so for the first argument, we want the amount of time in milliseconds that we actually want it to wait for. And then I need a lambda expression. So we need something here that implements an interface which actually has one argument, but we're not interested in the argument. Let's just call it E or something and we'll have an arrow and then the curly brackets. So this is the argument that the time is going to pass to us, but we're not actually interested in it. And within those curly brackets, I can add some stuff that is going to happen when the timer has timed however many milliseconds we told it to time. Let's just add the import for timer. And the important thing here is you need the swing timer which is kind of specialized for working with swing, not Java util timer or some other timer. So I click finish and just add the semicolon on the end there. So when the timer times out, we can do main frame dot set app state. And we want to set it to state dot click. So this is going to tell the user to click immediately. Then we need to gather um, the present time in milliseconds. 
So up here, I'm going to put a private long start time. And then down here, let's say start time. So this is when we begin timing. And what we're timing is how long it takes the user to react. So we, we've set when this timer goes off, we're going to set the state to click. They're going to see a panel that says click now. And immediately we start a timer to time how long it will take them to react to that. So here I'm going to say start time equals system dot current time in milliseconds. Now, if they click and we're in this uh, wait state, so this is where it's saying um, wait for the color to change and then click as quickly as possible. They've just clicked prematurely and we actually don't want to do anything in that case. So let's just put a comment here, do nothing. If they click and we're in the state click, so then it's telling them to click and they do click, then, then we can calculate how long they took to react. So we can say here, var end time equals system dot current time in milliseconds. This will give us some number of milliseconds since, I don't know, 1970 or something. And then to calculate the reaction time, all we have to do is say, let's say var reaction time equals end time minus start time. And that's how long they took to react. And once we've got that information, then we can set the state to results. And if they're in the result states, which is presenting them with their reaction time, and then they click, then we go back to the state greet. So the logic is okay. There's a couple of things we have to do though. We need to start the timer, but we also need to say that we don't want the timer to repeat over and over again. So I want to say set repeats false for this timer. And we want to say timer dot start. And let's output the reaction time for the moment just in the console. So I'm going to say here, sys out, and we're just going to output the reaction time. Okay, so let's give this a go and see how it looks. Okay, so it says click or press spacebar to begin. We haven't enabled the spacebar to work yet, so I'm just going to click. Then it says wait, and after a certain amount of time, it's going to change, and then I click, and it tells me how long I took to react, which in this case was very long because I wasn't really trying. Let's click and now we'll try again. So click and I'm going to try to click as quickly as possible. And I got 254. I am talking at the same time though. Okay, so that's not bad. What we have to do next is fill in this screen here. So we want to present some information on the screen. And we also want the space bar to work. So I want people to be able to not just click, but alternatively just press the space bar. And once we've done that, then our application is finished. So we're going to look at that stuff next time. And just a reminder, this is how I make my living. If you go to caveofprogramming.com, you can find a complete course on Java Swing there. And I've got lots of other courses on Java and Python and advanced Java and MySQL and all kinds of stuff. So do consider checking that out. Thank you very much. Okay. And catch you next time.